Creator, bless these gathered here today with understanding, forgiveness, and patience. And may we always see the good in one another and treat each other with respect. Amen. We have been able to assemble a list of industry representatives who have traveled to be here today and to share their work with us and to listen to our priorities related to major project development. I'm Charlene Gale, I'm Chair of the First Nation Major Projects Coalition. I'm also a Councillor for Fort Nelson First Nation. First Nations across Canada are saying that they need to be part of major development happening in their territories, not only to close the social economic gaps, but the infrastructure gaps. What the Coalition does is they facilitate meetings between industry, government and other proponents, investors that are looking to develop in their lands. We are primed for partnerships. We are designed for partnerships. I'm Philip Dugan, Vice President of Business Development for Canada for Amberic Development Partners. We create the electricity businesses of the future. We need local partners to push projects forward. We know that First Nations want to drive forward renewable energy development. We've got the expertise to do that. Uh, and we think that they're the best local partner you could have. We're really focused across the country and more recently in the United States on wind, hydro, solar and, uh, and more recently storage development. I'm Jason Edworthy. My role is Director of Community and Indigenous Affairs at Blue Earth Renewables. I think that the value of the coalition is that it's providing support to so many communities now totaling 40 different First Nations. It just makes it easy to come to an educated, and uh, well-resourced uh, group of nations that have come together all for the same purpose. They're, they're looking for deals, they're looking to work with business, and they want to do it right. These public-private partnerships, or P3s as we call them, are not a panacea. My name is Mark Romoff, and I'm the President and CEO of the Canadian Council for Public-Private Partnerships. Well, the mandate of my organization is really to work with governments and Indigenous communities across Canada to help them um, really make uh, better investments in infrastructure in order to get the very best outcomes for communities. It's a very good point you're making because it's an opportunity for First Nations communities across the country to take an equity position and so all of a sudden they've got a stake in the project. So my name is Angel Ransom, I'm from Nakasli Watan. I'm from the Kwamba Watan clan which is the Caribou clan and I'm the Environmental Stewardship Technical Team Lead. We conduct research, we create tools for the communities. The Environmental Stewardship Framework will get major project coalition members the tools they need when they need them in ways that make a difference in protecting lands, waters, and ways of life. My name is Ricardo Toledo, and I am a member of EAO once again, the Environmental Assessment Office, as uh, in the position of acting uh, executive director for First Nations Relations. It has a mandate to revitalize the environmental assessment process to ensure the legal rights of First Nations are respected. We can directly say that this will result in changes. We will be making changes. We will be implementing the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People. When we think about a major project, we think about how can we preserve and also um, create uh, renewable resources so that we can leave something for future generations. I think it, it's so important that Canadians understand the things that First Nation people have gone through over the past hundred years and to see um, provincial and federal policy change to incorporate Indigenous values um, when looking at UNDRIP and the ten principles that have been passed down by the Minister of Justice is so important that we start thinking that way as Canadians. We've got a number of equity or partnerships that are quite significant. I will suggest that we must improve that. And it is currently a narration that prosperity in Canada means prosperity for all folks. It's more than just an equity stake in the regional. It means a really deeper dive across Canada. What does that lens look like to share the prosperity to all Indigenous people all across Canada? This isn't just a regional initiative, this is a national initiative. Like I said, First Nations across Canada are saying that they need to be involved in, in major infrastructure that's happening in their communities. My name is Derek Fox. I'm the Deputy Grand Chief of Anishinaabeaski Nation. I'm here to talk about the First Nation Sovereign Wealth Fund. So you have the Ring of Fire, you have Wate, you have the Sovereign Wealth Fund, and they all need our support as advocates, as leaders. We have these vast resources in the north. 
uh, the Ring of Fire. Wate is just getting started. Like many of our leaders, we're very passionate about the same thing, which is a better lives for our people, better lives for our young people. Our role is strictly financial in terms of providing advice to get our clients the best, cheapest source of capital, um, the highest level of ownership. PwC is financial advisor to the First Nations as well as to the project. Um, and we have been working with, with Watenikiniap for five years. Watenikiniap, we worked with our elders to help us name the project. Hi, I'm Margaret Kenikwanash. I'm from North Caribou Lake First Nation. I am the CEO of Watenikiniap uh, Power. Watenikiniap Power is a transmission company that's owned 51% uh, by 22 First Nations and 49% by our partner Fortis. And the goal of uh, Watenigania Power is to connect uh, remote First Nations to the transmission grid. Our First Nations are working towards controlling and uh, benefiting from a major infrastructure within our territory. At the same time, how do we develop the, the model, financial model of a project that will create that benefit uh, meaningful way and also create that capacity. The opportunity to work with a group like the Coalition who's very focused on making sure that Indigenous communities can really make headway in addressing their own economic issues, for us, this is a natural partnership. Who better to have than, uh, as your partner than people that have been on the land for 10 or 15,000 years? As a First Nation leader, I am so proud of the work of the Coalition. Now we are seeing a new light on how we can move forward in this economy, how we can look after our people by working together. I would encourage the Coalition to continue to, to work together, set a standard of expectation, to be part of any major infrastructure in our homelands and to have a say in that major infrastructure with industry, governments, is so important in creating a future and benefit for our future generation. So stay together and uh, kudos to all of you for the work that you do.